it feels good to sit in the King Ranch again. So this is actually a very, very big day for the King Ranch here we're about to about to do. Um, we're actually, we're actually finally going to be deleting it. Totally kidding guys, sorry for that, that was a really bad joke because I know a lot of people would be really wanting to see that video. But no, we're actually going to be changing the oil and some other things here, as you can see right there. Engine oil needs changed. It's actually been due for about a week. Which isn't too bad. We haven't put too many miles on this since then. But uh, overall, um, it should be a fairly easy job. Changing oil is really not a big deal in terms of level of you know skill required to do it but it's definitely a really important job to get done on your trucks. Well, any vehicle for that matter, but um, especially on these heavy duty vehicles, you gotta make sure you maintain them because every little bit of maintenance can either make or break the longevity of your vehicle for the most part on, on most vehicles. So we're gonna get that taken care of right now. I'm not entirely sure what my dad has for the truck in terms of oil, but he usually always goes synthetic and he usually also mixes in Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer just to kind of, I don't know, just kind of a little extra added protection, um, a little bit better lubrication for the motor. So we're gonna get right into the barn here, get all opened up, get started with the job. I hope you can all hear me just fine. I'm getting ready to change the oil in the truck. Um, as you can see, this is a, by the way, this is a 2013 F350 Super Duty with a 6.7 liter, uh, with the 6.7 liter Power Stroke diesel in it. Great truck, wonderful motors. This is our 1992 Dodge Cummins 12 valve. Wonderful truck to work on. These are completely different beasts as you could imagine. Such, I mean, decades apart, but um, totally different animals. Love them both. They're both amazing in their own way, but what we're gonna be doing is changing the oil on this, as I already mentioned. I got my oil pan right here to uh, collect all the, the old oil. What you're gonna need is a 5 8 socket. You're going to need some gloves to keep your hands a little bit clean. And one more thing that I like to have on me, just in case I need it, this belt right here, just in case. So we're gonna get right to this. Hopefully my audio turns out okay on the GoPro. It shouldn't be too hard, it should be pretty easy. So what we're gonna do here is start by popping the hood on the truck. And now these trucks are completely different animals underneath the hood. I mean, when you go from the first gen to one of these, it is, I mean, it is just crazy the difference. Look how packed it is under here. I mean, that thing is packed. There's not a lot of room, not a lot of wiggle room, but uh, just enough to get your job, your basic maintenance done. So I'm gonna have to set up the GoPro here and uh, gonna go through what I'm doing, the way we're doing it, and why we're doing it this way. So I'm gonna start off by doing is removing oil fill cap um, so that when we do go to actually, you know, drain it and fill it, I guess, but mostly draining it, we can get a little bit better airflow so that they can drain out a little bit faster. So first thing you're gonna wanna do, of course, is take out your oil drain plug. Teeter bar. Shop did the oil change last, so they get those things pretty darn snug on there. I've never had a truck do that. That pressure down there shot that freaking oil out. Almost hit me in the face, man. Holy smokes. Look at that mess. That pressure in there shot that oil way out. Guys, that's something you really couldn't have seen for coming unless you've done a lot of these trucks. And I have not done really many of the new trucks like this. I've done older ones where you take the cap off and the oil goes straight down, but I've not done that to where the oil legit shot. And I mean, look, I even got it spray on here. The pressure was that bad. Like I was back like two, three feet and it still shot at me really bad. I hope you can hear me with this rain. There's a nasty storm just moved in out of nowhere. It was blue skies, sunny, and then out of nowhere, here comes the rain. This is probably gonna be done here in just a couple minutes, draining, and then I have to wipe that all up, plug it all back up, take off the oil, the old oil filter, fill it with the new oil, almost done. Now time to remove the oil filter, if you can hear me at all.
Well, everybody, that was, to be honest, in the beginning I spoke a little bit too soon, and I said, thank you, Ford, for the way they designed this down there, which, it, you know, in a sense, I mean, it was very accessible. I mean, it did make sense in terms of location, but that was, to be quite truthful with you, the messiest oil change I've ever done. I've never got that kind of oil all over the pavement because of how sporadic it, sh you know, shot out all over the place and then stopped, and wow. So I'm just gonna leave this here for a second. Um, actually, I'm gonna pull it out of the way a little bit more. Um, anyways, so that maxed out that oil, you know, drain pan there. So that was a very close call. Uh, pick up all the tools here, get everything out of the way. My little cheater bar to break that bolt loose because sometimes when the shops do them, which they did this previous, they put those things on pretty daggone tight. So. Now I have filled up the oil filter with one quart of oil. And what we're gonna do for this truck, let me go through really quick. We're gonna do two quarts of Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer, um, which to us is a very important thing. We like to use Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer. Some people say it's, it's, a, it's a load of crap, it doesn't work, it's not legit, but we believe in this stuff. We think it really does work. And so if you guys wanna pick some of this stuff up, it's pretty much in any automotive store, we'll have it. I mean, Walmart's probably have it back in the automotive section. I mean, all that good stuff. So we're gonna go through here, process that I take that uh, my dad basically brought me up to take when doing oil changes. I mean, it's pretty. It's a pretty basic process, but it's something that we take pretty seriously. Definitely something you guys should consider when doing your oil changes on your trucks as well. Okay guys, so let's get right to this. This truck takes a total of 13 quarts of oil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two quarts of the Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer, and then we're gonna do the rest of just, you know, you know, 11 quarts of oil. We already put one in the oil filter. So I put one in the oil filter and you count that obviously. And then you're gonna do two of these is what we do um, in placement of the oil. So basically for every one quart of these you put in, you're gonna take out one obviously for the oil. So there's about three quarts left in here. What I'm gonna do is start off by using this oil and then I'm going to use some heavy duty oil stabilizer and then I'm going to do the rest of the other oil just to kind of wash it down, I guess. Now we're gonna do two quarts of Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer and this stuff is thick and it really gets the job done. It really does help your motor out in the long run by lubing things up a little bit better doing a little bit better job. So we definitely like to use a good amount of this stuff when doing our oil changes. And remember for every one of these you quarts you use, let's say you use two of these obviously, it's not the hard to figure out. If you use two of these, you're gonna take two quarts of the oil that you would normally use and not use it instead. Well, I'm gonna open up the garage door here. Give the truck a start up, a little idle a little bit. And uh, then we can do our oil oil reading and see where we're at now the oil change required thing is not going to go away until we reset the computer let it run a little bit check it in about 45 seconds here probably going to turn it off and check the measurements again see where we're at well i let it run for about three four minutes i think it's time to shut it off let it sit about 45 seconds and we should be able to check the oil level and See if we're good. Well, we let the truck sit a little bit, so now we're gonna check the level and see what it's at. I have to clean the dipstick off first, but these trucks, the front ends are so deep, it's really hard to reach all this stuff. I'm just shy of six foot, and it's still pretty hard to reach back in here. Pretty much perfect, if you ask me. This fisheye camera makes everything look really funny, but I think you get the idea. I think we're good. We should, I think we should be good. Well, everybody, that is going to wrap up the oil change process on the 2013 F-350 Super Duty with the 6.7 liter Power Stroke diesel in it. This truck has been a pretty darn good truck. We've got a lot of stuff we want to do to this truck, but you know, giving my dad has one, two, and then three diesels. It's kind of hard to, you know, come up with the money to do them all. Um, especially when you think about like just doing like, let's say a turbo upgrade because these turbos and these trucks are not very reliable. And um, let's say do turbo upgrade, deleting, you know, wheels, tires, and he does need tires fairly soon. All that good stuff. I mean, you're talking like 10 grand right there just between that stuff. This truck, to get it where we want it, you're talking about five grand in terms of wheels, tires, and stuff like that. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not cheap by any means. So uh, I get all the time, you know, 
Why haven't you guys just done all the work to the six seven? Why haven't you done everything to the you know to the first gen? Why haven't you just and I mean it sounds great in theory like oh well it's just easy just go to the shop and you get new tires you get new stuff put on the truck but I mean this stuff is this stuff is expensive as it I'll get out and like I've said in other videos you know my dad's a businessman like he's got a lot of other stuff he has to tend to a lot of other responsibilities businesses he's got to run um, and so like he can't just sit here and focus on working on his truck like that's what i do for the most part besides you know other farm work and stuff but that's mostly what i do because that's what i do now full time is i'm pretty much like i have to sew into my channel which means i have to sew into my build and you know other areas you know to try to make make ends meet so that the next month i have at least some kind of revenue to you know to pay for mods and upgrades the next month you know to get myself by but for the most part like you know like i said just just kind of to un you know get some understanding i mean this stuff is really expensive for the most part they're my dad's trucks you know the ones that you guys are referring to um, now my truck of course I do whatever I want on it. it's my truck it's my money it's my build I paid for the truck I pay for the bills on it and everything else so that's all up to me but for everything else it's just kind of it's my dad's thing thank you guys so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed the video if this helped you out at all with your oil change process on your power stroke maybe you want to try that. it doesn't always have it doesn't have to all apply to this this truck now the measurements of oil and stuff do apply to this truck but the you know the process that I took does not necessarily apply to this truck you can apply it to any diesel that you know is accepting you know the lucas and stuff like that just make sure all of your oil and stuff is obviously specific to your truck um, or stabilizers but for the most part it's pretty much pretty much universal you know that process thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed please leave a like it really does help a ton leave a comment below subscribe if you're new and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace Doing what I love, going day to day But I know it takes time and I'm patiently waiting Sometimes I contemplate cause One day you feel so close and the next is out of sight But I know I gotta hold on tight to go back to just going out every night Like if I'm about to let it go now I can live alright Live a normal life, doing 9 to 5 But I know I'm more than that I gained this skill, wasn't born with that At the end of the life it's a memory